come into the church in the morning with my calendar set and it never goes as the calendar tells me it's gonna go. I spend a lot of my day checking on parishioners either by phone call or by visits. I'm responsible for some of our weekday worship meeting with couples who are going to come to the church to be married, meeting with families as they mourn and grieve the death of a beloved. Some days I am on for teaching a Bible study and of course the day in and day out working with the staff and overseeing some staff members. Or I may be going to the coffee shop to meet one of our youth after school to see how their day and how their life is going. So the excitement of every day is that no day is ever the same. The challenge might be that you might spend hours going to committee meetings, uh, meeting with a family who's just lost a child, trying to build a budget and raise money for your own salary and to keep the church going. And all of this might happen in eight or 10 or 12 hours. I mean, the old story is that, uh, you know, pastor goes to seminary and thinks that uh, he or she's equipped to uh, lead a congregation and then goes into a congregation and quickly discovers a whole other set of skills that they have to acquire. I was raised by a pastor and um, the model of ministry I saw in my father, I wouldn't say that he was uh, completely isolated, but what I primarily saw was a man who spent an awful lot of time in his own study, really wrestling with the challenges of the various churches that he was serving, and he was doing it primarily alone. One of the things that surprised me is the loneliness of pastors and clergy. Being a pastor separates you from the people you work with, both your staff, because you are their boss, your chief of staff, and from your parishioners, because on one level you're always their pastor. You can't be their friend. Being a pastor isn't easy. You, you'll, you have a congregation that's filled with individuals, and each individual has expectations of their pastor. And pastors by nature are people pleasers. You need to be strong enough, filled with enough faith, enough courage, uh, enough of your own giftedness in order to make it on your own. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning Reverend. Emmanuel is an urban church. It is a predominantly African-American community. There are times when we don't bring up things when we should. It is a multi-racial or multicultural church. We need some discernment to know when we should not let something simmer. Pray about it. I was just going through something, you know, just having one of those uh, down times. I was feeling that, you know, maybe this is not what I should be doing. I think there's always this temptation to uh, take care of other people and not take care of ourselves. Many of them uh, either just sort of try to get along or they burn out. I don't call it burnout uh, or I didn't lose my sense of calling, but it was a time where uh, I just felt I'd run out of gas and didn't know sort of what was next for, for my season of ministry. Some of our most seasoned pastors at this particular time in their ministry might even go so far as to identify themselves as failing. I'd gone through a very, very difficult personal time in my life, um, a tragic death that was involved and, and there was a lot of pain involved. Coming out of that pain, there was a lot of grieving just a lot of difficulty in my own personal life. And that, of course, had an impact on my role as a pastor of a congregation. There came a point when the congregation wanted to move on. And I wasn't in a place yet to be able to move on in the same way that, that the church wanted to and needed to. Several years ago, I received a telephone call from a colleague asking me if I would be part of this group that was forming for the Institute for Pastoral Excellence. She was inviting me into a small group that would gather to be able to study and travel with funding and uh, in preaching and worship leadership. Lily is one of the major foundations that has religion as a part of its mission. They were looking for some new directions for some of their grants. And so they established a program of continuing education. It became a peer group based program, uh, allowing groups to design their own learning and to travel and to study together over time. 
people just having a chance to talk about what's going on in their life, in their ministry, then have others listen, pray, all those. That, that practice of building community together around real life has made, has made a, a huge difference. Being in a peer learning group gave me, really for the first time in my life, an opportunity to say words like, I'm, I'm broke, I'm empty. I'm not sure what to do next. Uh, Bev and I are not sure the next chapter in our marriage, what that looks like. What we found out about ourselves was that while we enjoyed each other's company, we didn't know each other very well. These pastors will understand what I'm experiencing. So that felt really good. Sometimes it brought tears. Uh, sometimes we we laughed and we laughed loud. Peer groups are effective no matter what kind they are. And our church is a very diverse community made up of people really from all the countries in Latin America and now with an English ministry component as well. Many of our pastors in the Latino community have not gone to seminary. Many of them, the vast majority in this area that I know, have not been, even been to college. They really haven't had the benefit of uh, being exposed to pastoring at the deeper levels. So I felt if we could expose Latino pastors to that dimension of uh, their ministries, we would have a huge impact because we could take these people who love ministry, who have a real sense of calling, who are integrated into the communities that they're pastoring, and give them that other superstructure, you know, we would really be able to have a, a significant impact. And that's exactly what the, the grant turned out to be. I think one of the more significant impacts that the Pastoral Excellence Grant has had is to begin to create a new culture among the participants. An understanding of ministry as not just something that involves anointing, but also getting behind that and seeing the, the structure of pastoring. You know, young, younger pastors are hungry for this. I mean, they're smart enough to know that they can't be Robinson Crusoe pastors. They can't, they can't go it alone, they really want to. But they need to find some context and support to provide them with the base of community that they really yearn for. This was the church in which the meeting that led to the Boston Tea Party happened. Sam Adams was a member, Ben Franklin was baptized there. And so there's this wonderful history sitting on one of the busiest street corners in the world. It's alive, it's full, it's vibrant. There's always 15 things going on in the building and most of them have to do with God. My entire time as a pastor has been spent in a place that has been supported by the Pastoral Excellence Program, where the Pastoral Excellence Program was just around me all the time. So uh, I, I've never lived in a ministry context where that old narrative was operative. The old pastoral story is one to live in darkness. Our struggles need not be isolated and seen as different from what has been a part of the human condition. And I think that pastors who discover that kind of love and that kind of authentic way of being in the world with people will make a difference in congregations. Congregational change comes first through transformation in the life of the pastor. What the Sustained Pastoral Excellence Program has provided is an opportunity for pastors to live in the light. How do we bring the light of Christ into the community? How do we you know, manifest that you know, ourselves? How do we nurture that in each other? When Jesus says you are the light of the world, he's not just talking about individuals, he's talking about his body, the church. Individual identities and success must be tied to community. One of the things that Sustaining Pastoral Excellence has done is to break the bondage that we have had to individualism and has taught us that we are part of a broader community. Christian faith is personal, but it's not individual. Christian faith has to be lived out 
in the context of community. There's a reason why Jesus is doing ministry in community. I think the disciples listened to him, uh, learned from him, prayed with him, uh, blessed him. Even our Lord Jesus needed community, functioned in community, and gave us this enormous image that he wanted to be in community with us and wanted us to be in community with each other. If we turn to scripture and we think about what it means to shepherd, then we begin to understand, I think, what it is to be an excellent pastor. It's a well-rounded individual who has the passion and love for his congregation and wants to excel in everything that he does or she does in order to really equip and empower the members of that congregation to live Christ-like lives. Excellence is not the occasional aspiration of a pastor, but excellence is the standard by which pastors, congregations, bishops, clergy, laity, this is the standard to which God calls all of us. All of that traces right back to these pastoral excellence groups. There will be leaders who will be selfless, uh, who will not be self-centered around what it means to be a successful pastor, separate apart from what it means to be a successful Christian living in the midst of other Christians who are able to understand how love empowers our world. That's what I'm thinking that Lily has given as a profound gift uh, over this period of time that they've had this project of sustaining pastoral excellence. They've given the gift for love of ministry, a love of pastoral spirituality and ministry in a way that others would not have had if they had not participated in this project. I think my wife got her husband back. I know that I have a group of guys that I can email or phone up, and there are places where I can tell what I need to tell about my struggles. And because of that, and when I come back, I get my smile back. Peer Learning gave me my smile back. <laughs>